Hi again, uh, here we are to um, almost to the end of this, this long series of shopping cart videos, but uh, hopefully we've learned a lot of JavaScript. We've covered a lot of ground. We, you know, we worked with variables and functions and arrays and objects and, and the DOM, right? And we worked with event listeners, right? So there's actually, this has like a lot of like the, you know, core JavaScript features in it, right? Um, you know, and it's the kind of thing you'll do with a lot of stuff, right? You know, we just put it in this in the shopping cart form. Um, you know, you could make like to do lists. You could make like this could be part of your your you know Twitter like platform. You know, you could get all the data that you display rather than us creating it here. It could come from a server, and you could just be looping through those things and generating um, you know content in the DOM, right? Um, so what do we need to do next to continue with with this project, right? So uh, you can see in the in the last example here, and I realize mine actually has a mistake too. Um, we uh, we can set the quantity by typing the number in here. So I can say seven there. I realize like I have a mistake here where if I can if I type in a zero, it should actually remove the item, right? But it sets the quantity to zero. We'll we'll address that in in our example, right? But uh, essentially, we want to add a form element that's inside our list, right? And if we want to, you know, set the number of items in the cart, we'll be able to type it in, right? Um, so how do we do that, right? So we need the form element here, right? And so that means every time we generate a list item, we're generating three buttons and now we'll need an input, okay? So let's, uh, let's go to our code here and the show item function is kind of responsible for generating you know the text on the list item and the three buttons and maybe here before the closing list item what we'll do is we'll add an input and we'll give it a class name let's call it update okay and uh, you know let's set the type right so uh, let's make it type number right by default the numbers will will be integers so it'll be like one two three four like we don't want people to be able to set you know the quantity to you know 0.5 items like that doesn't make sense right so we don't need to set the step here and the default value will work for us um, otherwise we'd want to set the step to one right so we could only step in whole numbers right um, we might want to um, set like a min and a max so you can say min and we could say minimum of zero you know um, maybe if our store had uh, knew what the inventory was we could set the max to the maximum number of items someone could buy right um, we'll just leave these out for now because i think i think as it is it'll work right you know maybe that min zero would have been good i'll just leave it like this right but if we have this um, thing here we might also want to have a label but i think that would be kind of awkward on our form as it is so i think it's okay just to have this guy without the label let's uh, save that and see what it looks like right so if i go here and i and i refresh you can see now i've got my form element there it doesn't matter what it looks like right um you know uh you know, we, we, you know, we can use our style sheet to fix that later. So what we wanted to do now, though, is, is we want to detect when the value in here changes. So earlier, we used a couple events, right? We used um, the uh, on-click event to determine if you clicked an element, like that's a mouse click, right? And then we used the on-submit event, which means you click the button that generated a submit event for the form right actually i'm realizing my form is going to have a problem here if you submit it with no items the price will be zero and the name will be be nothing right so that's actually something that we should check for later well anyway we'll, we'll come back to that right let's pretend that never happened um anyway so i just realized that we got it we should check for that right but anyway so so this you know on submit detects when you submit a form right so what happens when an item changes right and change like buttons can't change but inputs like fields where you type text in they can change right and menu items can change too like when you have a drop down menu right so and radio buttons and check boxes can change also so uh we're going to listen for an on change event and the on change event is actually going to happen on the list item okay i know it sounds kind of weird but remember those those inputs don't exist un until we create them 
So we can't listen for them until after they're created. And they'll generate an event message that, you know, bubbles up from their, you know, um, from their position up to their parent. And the, uh, the, the item list will get that message, right? So we'll say, you know, handle um, change events on uh, update input you know something like that right and then what i'm going to say is i'm going to say item list dot on change now remember the these um event names right here they are not camel case right so this is all lowercase okay and then we'll make a function here and we'll say e because all events always get an event object they always follow the same form so anytime you see a new event if it's not one of the ones you learned here it's always going to get an event object right okay we don't have to handle the the prevent default i don't think on this because it's not a form like we didn't wrap this in a form if we had wrapped the um the stuff here inside a form so this input was in a form then we would need to do that right so i don't think that we'll need that here so uh, now what are we going to do well we're not going to get an on change when um you know uh when if something like we're only gonna get the on change if that um that ul that that input inside the the li changes right but let's just check for it anyway so we'll, we'll follow the same procedure here we'll say hey if target and e dot uh, target dot um class list dot contains and if it contains the class name update and remember we put this class name on our input a moment ago right so if the thing contains this then we know that that's the thing that generated the update right oh you know i realize i i sorry i'm going a little too fast on this one i forgot a few things right so so now what we need to do is we need to update so let's do actually just for fun let's console log the the element that just generated this event so i'll say e.target so that should give us the the input that that generated the change event and let's let's see how those change events occur so i'm going to refresh my page here and if i type a number in here like 22 right let me go get the console there oh i guess i got the console so i don't see anything happen here but when i click on another input then i see the value here right let's try that again so what if i type in 33 here nothing happens down here but if i click outside then something happens right so that's kind of how the on change works if the field is still active like if i type in 44 and then i hit return then you can see something happens right so <clears throat> so the input is not going to generate an on change like as you're typing we actually have an event for that too but um i feel like we should wait until you hit return if i think that feels about right you know um but realize like that's how it's going to work okay on change is going to happen when you you know you've changed the value and then either clicked outside or you know this field lost focus right so it has focus when it has the blue line around it so if i switch focus to this thing you'll see a new line appear down here right okay so cool so we got that working so now we need a couple pieces of data right we need the name of the item in the cart that just changed so we need this name so we can give this input a data name property that was what i forgot earlier and then the other thing is i i realize like our code here can't really handle updating items in the shopping cart it can't change the quantity it doesn't we don't have a function for that so uh, let's let's handle those two things right so first of all let's go down to the uh, show items function and inside here the input right here has a class and a type let's give it a data name and give it the name of the item in our cart okay so now we can identify the name right and now that we've done this let's uh, let's go back up to the top here and get that right so uh here we are you know list uh, change and what we'll do is we'll say you know const name equals e dot target dot data set dot name and that should give us the name in that um, attribute okay and now what we want to do is we want to make a function that we can call on right and we'll pass it the name 
and the quantity, like the new quantity. So the quantity, the new quantity anyway, is going to be the value that you typed into the field. Do you remember how to get that? Hmm. Stop the video and try it on your own. Okay, hey, did you figure it out? Okay, so let's try it. So I'm going to say a uh, quantity, this will be the new quantity, equals e.target.value, right? So that's the value that you type into the field, right? And uh, we should make sure that this is a number, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to say parse int, right? Parse int is a function that takes in a string and then returns a number. These values that you get, even though it's type number, it's actually not a number. When you get it from the field, it comes in as a, a string. So I'm going to type in parse int here, and then parse int is a function. So I'll, I'll wrap all this in the parentheses, right? So I'll parse this as an integer, and then it'll return the number to me, okay? Okay, great. And then now we'll need to do something here, right? Okay, so what do we need to do here? We need a function that will take in, and let's imagine it looks like this. I'm going to say, you know, how about update uh, cart, right? And then we'll say name of the item and the new quantity for that item, okay? So our signature for our function looks like this. It, you know, it t here's the name, and then it takes in two parameters, right? So let's now define that function. So I'm going to go down here. Maybe I'll put it um, after remove item. Yeah, so it'll go down here maybe. You could put it anywhere, right? So I'll put it here. And um, let's say function name or update cart name and quantity, right? And now what we want to do is maybe we'll just follow the same procedure we used up here for removing an item, right? It'll be a little bit different, but you know, if you remember how to do this, you can give it a try on your own, right? Just stop the video and, and, and you try that on your own. Um, and then I'll give you my solution. Okay, so I'm going to just follow the same situation that we did before. I'll just loop through the cart until I find the item with the matching name. So I'll say cart dot length um, is you know i plus equals one right so I'll say let i equals zero let's loop while i is less than the length of the cart we'll add one with each loop and then we'll say hey you know if um, cart bracket i dot name equals the name that you passed into the function, then what we want to do is we want to say cart uh, bracket i dot quantity equals the quantity that you passed into this function. And since all the names in our code are unique, we can just say return right here and it will, um, it will end the function there. And if we did this, we would want to update the cart. So we'll call show items again, okay? And that should redraw our cart. Let's give it a test. Um, I've been doing pretty good, so sometimes I make mistakes. I always test. I always got to test my work. Let's uh, refresh here. Um, let's type in. This is obviously too many apples, right? Let's get only two apples there. Oh, there we go. Two apples seems like it's working. Oranges, though, you always got to have at least four of those. And I'll hit return, and then it updates, right? Hey, that's working pretty good. Um, two opinions and. Uh, Let's do zero frisbees. Oh, can't have zero frisbees, so our code needs one more thing, right? And you can try and figure this out on your own, but essentially, like, if the quantity got set to zero, what happens, right? And actually, that kind of makes me think, what if I set the quantity to negative three? Like, that would kind of subtract from my cart, and now I my total is negative 22. So what happens here, right? You could stop the video and try that one on your own, Okay, so so how did you do, right? Let's let's give it a try. What if I'm here and I say, um, hey, you know, uh, if uh, well, actually, if we set the quantity right there, actually, you know what? We can do that first, right? Yeah, right. So we're just gonna check. We're gonna say like, hey, if quantity is is less than one, then we should just remove the item from the cart. 
okay so let's do this let's say hey if uh, quantity is less than one then we want to remove item right and we can do this a couple ways I'm actually just gonna call our remove item function pass the name in okay and remove item when we call on that it should also do show items for us right so if I call in this with no parameter it should remove the item for us right and if we've done that um, you know what I'll do is I'll just call return here because we just removed the item we found it no need to look any further if the quantity is one or greater then we'll set the quantity and show the items and then we can quit right okay so let's uh, let's refresh and save this right let's set the quantity here to uh, four um, let's set the quantity here to zero. Oh, it removed it let's say frisbees are negative three frisbees and it removes them right okay so thanks for watching I hope that's interesting and I think we've got our um, our cart working pretty good and I guess in the last video we just need to set the um, the style right so you can even try that on your own uh, I'll do another video for that um, if you got any questions please put them in the comments and thanks for watching